actually it's not unusual for children especially to get into these batteries. They're small, shiny, and two-year-olds, everything goes into their mouth. Here at the Oklahoma Center in 2015, we averaged about um, one call a week where a child had swallowed one of these batteries. Actually, it's quite unusual for uh, a severe or a very bad outcome from uh, swallowing a button battery. The problem is that when things go wrong, they go really wrong. For example, you can have severe burns in the esophagus and um, uh, sepsis where a person develops a, a infection throughout their entire body. Most of the cases, however, the battery just passes down through the stomach and, and comes out in the stool. One of the biggest concerns that we have is the potential for a burn in the esophagus. And it's, it can be essentially like an electrical burn. Um, a lot of people think that when you swallow something small, like one of these batteries, it's just going to slide right down the throat. Well, actually it can kind of get hung up in there, and electrical current can form and actually cause, cause a burn. Most children's toys will have a, a cover on them with a screw, a very small screw, that keeps that, that top secured in place. Check the children's toys before you give them. Make sure that that, that um, latch or that top is on there securely. And occasionally go through and, and look at the products that you have in the house that you might not think of. Other examples of other products that might have this type of battery would be a musical greeting card. Uh, remote controls, um, a lot of different kind of toys, uh, a remote for a car it has this type of battery as well. Make sure that, that all of those things are up and out of children's reach. Most products already come with the batteries pre-installed, but occasionally we will see instances where the batteries are separate. It's very important to keep those away from children. Uh, another thing that sometimes happens is that in changing out batteries, maybe a parent will drop a battery. And they're very easy to get lost in the carpet. Children seem to be masters of finding stuff that we can't find. And it, at the young age of maybe one, two, where this is most prevalent, everything goes into the mouth and consequently can be swallowed and, and injury can follow. It's tempting to think that if my child swallowed one of these batteries, they're going to be coughing or choking. That's not always the case. It's important to remember that. The safest thing to do um, the best thing to do is to have that child x-rayed. An x-ray will very quickly determine where that battery is in the gastrointestinal tract. If it's up in the esophagus, the physician is going to need to take action right away. If it's down in the stomach, we can be a little bit calmer about it. Certainly small amounts of food, water, milk, whatever the child would like to drink is not going to be a problem. And in, in some cases might actually um, help a battery move down into the stomach. We don't want to overload the child with a, with a bunch of food or fluids, however, because if they get an upset stomach and vomit, then we run the risk of that ba battery actually being aspirated into the lungs, which could present another real problem. So small amounts of liquid and food are fine, not large amounts. Most of the injuries that are caused by these batteries are from the electrical current that develops around them when it comes in contact with tissue. Uh, they actually are built very sturdily and it's, it's fairly unusual for them to break while they're inside the, inside the person as they're passing through. So once they pass out of the esophagus and aren't trapped against, against flesh on the inside, we should be okay. It's going to be unpleasant for parents to have to watch as it passes through. They'll have to check the child's stool, but um, if it doesn't pass within two or three days, then we might want to have the child checked again. Maybe another x-ray might be in order. So um, I, would, I would advise parents or caregivers to call the Poison Center. We will explain what we feel is the best course of approach. And you can reach us at 800-222-1222. We've got nurses and pharmacists on the lines. They'll be happy to help you out.